It's a new day! This is New Day Northwest. Now, here's Margaret Larson. Hey, good morning, everybody. First up, a classically trained musician from Bainbridge Island who finds himself in the hip-hop spotlight. Andrew Jocelyn has performed with Macklemore from the beginning and still records and tours with him. He also composes movie scores, performs with his own ensemble and other notable musicians, including my fave, Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses, my favorite band ever. Andrew released his debut album, Awake at the Bottom of the Ocean, over the summer, and now he's here with the string quartet and vocalist Whitney Lyman. Please welcome Andrew Jocelyn. to the California Sea, you got to hide 
Hi. What a beautiful way to start the morning. Can I give you a hug? Is that part of the thing? Yeah. How are you? Have a seat. Good. Would you introduce everybody? That was so beautiful. I want Ab you to just keep going for the hour, and then we'll say bye. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What have um, we got here? I have Whitney Lyman so on vocals. So beautiful. Um, on second violin is Alina Toe. Hello. Uh, Seth May Patterson on viola. Awesome. And Taylor Ray Jensen on cello. Yay! Thank you so much. Trained, yeah, but you happen to have a brother in the biz who sort of uh, <laughs> helped you make a turn in the music business, or at yep. least in in opening some horizons. So tell us about Chris and what he did in your life. Right. Well, uh, I guess first and foremost, started playing classical violin when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. So when my parents as got me, as we all do, <laughs> as we all do, mm -hmm. and my uh, so my family kind of had a pedigree of classical musicians. My step grandfather started the London String Quartet, wow. and my grandmother performed with the MGM Studio Orchestras with Rosinski. <laughs> and so my Super my genes. parents, yeah, well, my parents impressed it upon me from an early age. And at first, I was like, ah, oh, this is a lot to kind of uh, take in as a kid. Mm -hmm. So. Um, when I was a child, I was just listening to classical all the time. And my brother, who's Chris Catan, from um, Saturday Night from Live, Saturday Night Live you guys know him. yeah, which, uh, funnily enough, this the song we just played is actually about him. Really? So the which is you know it's called Icarus and it's about the kind of uh, pitfalls of Hollywood and flying too mm. close to the sun. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what that song's about. <laughs> there so we have. That was a little serendipitous. Some fan pictures. Yeah. But he, he made a mixtape for you, is this yeah. correct? And so, so we, yeah. I'm sorry we don't have mixtapes anymore. I no, I know. It, it, yeah, a little tape cassette. So yeah, so my brother and <laughs> I, he was the- my heart on a cassette tape. tape we, we both went to Bainbridge High School. Uh, we were both born in California, moved up in the 80s. We're uh, unfortunately a part of the California invasion. Yes, oh, it's so, okay. It's all right. It's We're okay. over it You can now, forgive me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, we, yeah, we moved up. We both, went, uh, Chris graduated Bainbridge High School in 89. He was the mm -hmm. class clown and uh, he, <laughs> How uh, yeah, well, he saw that I was technically in the dark ages when it came to music. I was listening to Renaissance music and classical <laughs> Baroque and he was just like, okay, I have a mixtape I want to put together for you. And it had Roxy Music, Sting, U2, uh, Tears for Fears. Um, and in conjunction, my mom gave me a mixtape of film score music. Wow. And it was from like the 1968 in, um, uh, European Film Festival. Like mm -hmm. it was like La Dolce Vita, Who Shot the Piano Player, all the like the right. Fellini films and like uh, and Neo Morricone. So for me, it's like I got this diversity of uh, music and completely different genres that incorporated strings and other instruments and like Roxy music is just like Brian Ferry's like bands amazing. amazing. I hope the Clash was in there somewhere. Uh, that came later. Okay. Like the punk and all that kind of other stuff. Like so that just started me on this like absolute voracious appetite of finding music, and yeah, for me it was like all of a sudden like okay. Classical is not the only thing I'm interested in, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to just listen to everything. I was. Uh, it was very cool. They yeah. opened opened some doors, and yeah. you went right through them, which is yeah, the, the, well, the great thing. Exactly, and I did I did classical music all the way through college, um, but I freaked out because I felt that like my classical training was. Uh, I, I just didn't feel like I was on par. Once I graduated, I didn't feel like I was going to be on par with all the. The classical players that went to Juilliard, Oberlin, Eastman, like I felt like I was competing in an industry where I didn't have a future. So I was just really thunderstruck about like, well, what's what's my relationship with my instrument? What's my relationship with music? So um, I completely went out the side door and joined a rock band. And <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, I'm not going to even think about it. And um, st started touring and then um, moved to Seattle officially in 2005. Met Ben Haggerty, mm -hmm. um, who also just is known as Macklemore. There we go. And that was just a, a choice um, meeting in 2008. We just, just ran into each other someplace? with a mutual friend. I was working on mixtapes. When I first moved to Seattle, I was just eager to play with anybody mm -hmm. that would have me. So be it country, metal, gospel, anything. Like I was working and writing for everyone that would 
pay me a buck and just have me in the studio. But how so, great, because on this current album, I see that you play with Shelby Earle. Yep. You've also done some music with Duff McKagan, yep. who's from my most beloved band yep. of all time. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Uh, I was amazing. We So he, uh, a couple of years back, put out his autobiography about right. his experience Which is an with... an excellent book. Yeah. An amazing it's, autobiography. It's absolutely fantastic. So a part of his kind of book tour is he created, like, instead of just being the, the stuff he just... I mean, it's Duff McKagan. Instead of having a stuffy book terror where I'm just going to read passages from my book, he's like, I'm going to bring a band. <laughs> so, and we, uh, like a special kind of um, video presentation of this, this book and his story, we performed at the Moore Theater and oh, wow. uh, Alina and Seth were there with me and we also cool. had Dana Olive Tree on cello. So it was like the quartet was there. I did rearrangements of <laughs> like uh, a bunch of stuff from his own bands and from Guns N' Roses. So it was like... It was a re it was and a pretty you unreal film score. So I mean, yeah. I think once you opened the door, you went, you know, hey world, I'm here. Right. Uh, tell us just we have just a few minutes, a yep. few seconds actually, but tell us a bit about the the film scoring, what that's like. Right. So right now, um, yeah, the film scoring is a pretty relatively new thing for me. I threw out in the world about two years ago, and I was like, I feel like I'm, I have this the toolkit to do this, mm -hmm. but I, I don't have the experience or the, you know, the portfolio. So I started work and by just luck of the draw, like reached out to a bunch of producers down in Los Angeles and um, got picked up. The f my first film score was for a movie called American Violence and it was with Denise Richards and mm -hmm. Bruce Dern. Mm -hmm. And then uh, shortly thereafter did my first Western film soundtrack that had... For what movie? Uh, it was for a film called Hickok and it had Luke wow. Hemsworth in it and then I'm working on a new film for Corbin Burnson from uh, the 80s, L.A. Law. Yes, and L.A. Law, the blonde so, lawyer who yeah. has ethical issues. Right. Um, <laughs> but, we can never but, forget him. Yeah, what well, the great thing is I'm working on a film called Life with Dog for him right oh now. Gosh. And then, in, so in conjunction with that and writing my own music, I'm doing... Uh, a program for Seattle Symphony with Macklemore, so everything's coming full circle. You know, if you and weren't such a slacker, you could probably get more <laughs> things done. I just had a little more energy. It's, yeah. That's just an amazing story. Bless you. Thank keep, you. Keep doing what you love, because we love it right back. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Catch Andrew and the Passenger Ensemble Friday, February 16th at Kirkland Performance Center, which is a great venue. Ticket links are on our website. Go, go, go. Still ahead, rarely seen video of a civil rights icon, Malcolm X, from the the Smithsonian Archives. We'll be back in a moment.